hey everyone, this is Dana with What's Your Pastor Never Told You dot com. And Christopher Manti from Wings of the Eagle with your prophecy update. Welcome to today's broadcast. Today we wanted to talk with you a little bit about current events that are going on in the news that you might be having your eye on. First of all, everybody's talking about it. It's North Korea. And Trump had just this week an historic meeting with Kim Jong-un of North Korea. And things are really pretty interesting what's going on there. Um, Christopher Manti, what's your take on what's going on in North Korea? Well, certainly worth watching. I mean, if we're talking about world peace and nuclear war and all these things, certainly uh, something to watch and pray about. And hopefully God would do a mighty thing there in the nation, North Korea, to open it up to the gospel, to even King, King Jong-un himself to be saved. Uh, that would be the ultimate um, result, clearly, and for, um, you know, for the gospel to take over that, that nation. Um, Short of that, I mean, obviously being safe is good. Uh, not being threatened with these weapons is good. Ending the Korean War would be great. Biblical things, my understanding is it's not in there. So uh, anything that's not clearly in the Word of God, we got to take it and treat it appropriately, which is maybe. <laughs> we, <laughs> you know, we, we don't know for sure. We don't know for sure what exactly is going to come of it because it's not written. Um, you know, folks... You can get into speculation. You can say, well, this might lead into uh, some kind of peace deal, and maybe that will eventually rope in Israel, and then maybe we can talk about a prophetic thing. Maybe at that point we'll talk about it. Uh, but right now, you know, you don't want to be too, you don't want to have tunnel vision, certainly. It's great that it's happening, but uh, watch out, certainly. This, this is not a, a country that has told the truth a lot, so uh, be, be on your toes, be on your guard on that. Uh, and then biblically, we'll see. So um, it's it could be nothing at all. Uh, it could be no impact on prophecy at all. Um, or it could be the ancillary thing on the side. Or even a distraction, uh, which is what we always want to be on the lookout for, because the enemy will always look to confuse and, and distract us from where we should be looking, which is the Middle East. Yeah, absolutely. And what I think a lot of times people fail to recognize, especially if you're not from the Middle East, is that the Bible is a Middle Eastern book and it's talking about Middle Eastern regions, areas, people groups. And so a lot of times we from the West, we want to think that everything is about us. And so we try to read the Bible in that light sometimes, and that's a mistake to do that. And so a lot of times you'll get people, fanatics, they see stuff on the news and they want to make it be symbolic of something else that's going on in the scripture and they're making a case for something that's really not there. But definitely the North Korea situation is very interesting to watch and we should as believers be continuing in prayer, prayer for the believers that are in that country. It would be great for more freedom to come to that country. So we'll see what the Lord has in store. But just like Christopher said, you know, we're kind of watching it with just bated breath almost because it's like, do we really believe what's happening? You know, is are they being genuine and forthcoming or are they just you know, acting in a deceptive way. And so only time will tell, only the Lord knows. But it doesn't hurt to be praying about these issues, praying for President Trump that he would be wise in his decision making. Um, so since we brought up the topic of the Middle East and Middle Eastern prophecy is what the Bible is talking about, Christopher, there's been some really interesting developments going on with Turkey. Do you want to let us in on some of that? Yeah, for sure. This is a place we always want to at least have an eye on, if not both eyes, um, because the scripture is so rich in that land and pointing us in the direction for things to come, not just in the past, but coming up here. And uh, what has been happening in between Europe and Turkey has been a real tug of war for years now. And uh, Recep Erdogan, who is the dictator, president, uh, whatever king you want to call him, uh, of the nation of Turkey right now, is, is they've gone full uh, Islamicized, okay? Um, they are not a Western nation. They're not a, certainly not a Christian nation by any uh, measurement at all. They are uh, full-on uh, becoming uh, embraced with jihad and things like this. So what has been happening in Austria, um, they're are many Turkish imams that have been placed throughout Europe, many nations, but in Austria, um, they have set up a, a ton of new mosques with Turkish imams in there preaching pro-Erdogan, pro-Jihad stuff constantly, constantly, constantly. And the, unlike the other nations in Europe, like France and, and Great Britain, unfortunately, and even Belgium, they're bl turning a blind eye to these things. 
Austria has woken up to at least their leadership has said, we're going to close these down. Uh, we're, we're not going to tolerate this stuff. This is crazy. Um, so you're all out. Um, and they've done that this a couple days ago, this week. And so Erdogan has angrily replied, which is his thing. Um, he has come against, uh, obviously, that action and saying this is, this is anti-Islamic, this and that. But then he takes it up to the next level and says, you are going to start a holy war between the cross and the crescent, I think is his quote on that. So that's something you want. I mean, this is not some jokester or some guy in some you know backwoods uh, mosque or something. This is the leader of arguably the most powerful Islamic nation in the world um, and growing. And influence and size and strength. So we better we we would be very well served to listen to this man and to listen to what his nation is doing and what he is saying because he knows full well he's a very intelligent man. He knows full well that his words will have consequences. He knows who will hear it and take action, uh, like a, a Americans will call a dog whistle, right? Uh, you're going to respond to certain words, but unlike. The American version, where it's all kind of paranoia when we say things like that, this is true. Um, and so this is how jihadi networks operate, when they hear certain things and code words and things like that to go into action. So it's definitely something we should take a look at closely. Yeah, and not only is he threatening Europe with a holy war, but he's also advancing on other fronts in the Middle East. Do you want to talk to us a little bit about what's been going on there? Absolutely. I, I don't go, know what the problem is with these journalists in the world, um, but we've already had a Turkish de facto, not a de facto, it's an actual invasion of Syria uh, earlier this year, and now they've invaded Iraq. I mean, nobody said boo about it. I can't find anyone. Um, is it because it's just against the Kurds? Uh, as far as I can tell, that's the only reason why we haven't heard about it. And obviously, that's, this, is a, this is a crime and a travesty. We, we need to know. Um, and the Iraqi government, again, what, hands off, I don't know, we're, you're not invading our sovereignty all of a sudden because this has nothing to do with the Arab part or, or the Shiite part, okay? We're, we're, it's just those pesky Kurds up there, you do what you want. I think that's where we're at, and that's really bad, okay? So we're letting a dangerous, uh, Islamicized, uh, jihadi uh, leader who's incredibly powerful right now, he has dictatorial powers over this nation, uh, and he's freely talking about a war with Europe, and he's invading other nations. See, but the bottom line for him and his ilk there in Turkey is that's not another nation. This is all ours. And that is scriptural, and that's biblical, and maybe we should take a look at that. Yeah, absolutely. So what it brings to mind is Daniel chapter 8 in verse 5, and we're going to begin there. And, you know, just for the sake of time today, we don't have time to go in depth into all of the teachings on this. And Christopher Manti has some amazing teachings on the book of Daniel. If you guys go to wingsoftheeagle.com, you can find those there. But let's just begin today in verse 5 of Daniel chapter 8. While I was observing, behold, a male goat was coming from the west over the surface of the whole earth. Now, the male goat is just representative of a nation or an empire. And it says, over the surface of the whole earth without touching the ground. And the goat had a conspicuous horn between his eyes. He came up to the ram. Now, the ram was mentioned earlier in Daniel, and the ram was located in modern-day Iran. And that ram had two horns, which I had seen standing in front of the canal, and rushed at him in his mighty wrath. I saw him come beside the ram, and he was enraged at the ram, and he struck the ram and shattered his two horns, and the ram had no strength to withstand him. So he hurled him to the ground and trampled on him, and there was no one to rescue the ram from his power. Then the male goat magnified himself exceedingly, but as soon as he was mighty, the large horn was broken and in, in its place came up four conspicuous horns toward the four winds of heaven. Now, don't let the symbolic imagery here scare you about the book of Daniel. So we've just got these two beasts that are being represented. One is representing modern day Iran, and the other one we believe is coming from what was known as Yavan or modern day Turkey. Um, Christopher, do you have anything else you'd like to elaborate about this passage? That's it. And you folks, the viewers, should check this out themselves. We're not making this up. Go check it out. The interpretation is given in Daniel 8 itself. You don't even have to wonder about what these nations are or, or whether we're making it up or speculating. You can go down to verse 20, 21, 22, and it'll, the angel tells you what it is. 
what the nations are, where they are. And then in other places, he tells you when it applies. So again, the temptation is to say, this is in the past, this is Alexander the Great. No, no, no. The Bible is clear about this. It's an end time thing. So read it as an end time thing. And then when you see Yavon, if you know what that is, when you see the word Greece probably in your Bible, go back to the Hebrew on it. That's Yavon. This is the area where Turkey is today. This is where this horn will come from. And if we can see throughout this chapter and other places, this is his personality, and it's very, um, this horn, this leader that this goat has comes against other nations in the area, all right? Generally, this is what this is about. Specifically, it's because of an Iranian situation that happens, okay? And we're, I feel we're very, very close to that time. Um, but the point is, this ram uh, and this goat are going to clash, and this goat and this horn is going to be victorious completely. The, it's not going to even be a contest. They're going to dominate this whole region. All right, now, things. I personally, and this is not speaking for Dana or, or anyone else, um, the horn that with the, this great horn on the goat is Erdogan. This, this president of Turkey, he fits the description perfectly. He's not the Antichrist. Okay, we're not there yet. And this scripture tells us we're not there yet. But watch. Yep. Amen. So did you have another passage you wanted to also bring up here? Yeah, re just real quick so the folks don't get too immersed in this. Go to chapter 11 in Daniel as well, because this, again, kind of put aside the, the traditional teachings on this and just read it and see how it lines up. Because go read Daniel 8 and then go flip over to 11, where it says, again, we have a conflict between Persia and this place called Iran. Uh, I've told you three more kings will arise in Persia. Verse 3, then a mighty king shall arise who shall rule with great dominion. Dominion is a physical kingdom. It's land. A great dominion and do according to his will. He's a dictator who conquers other lands. And when he has arisen, his kingdom shall be broken and divided up to the four winds of heaven, etc. Okay, now that is exactly what we just read in Daniel 8. That's exactly what the goat does. That's exactly what this great horn does. He is victorious over other lands. He increases his dominion. He does what he wants. Um, this is a hallmark of Erdogan. He's doing these things now. It's not to say this, uh, this is absolutely happening at this second, but <laughs> what? again, be watchful, read it, pray about this, ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate you on this, and try, I believe me, I get it, there's a strong uh, temptation to look at commentaries and things like that, and oh man, this must be in the past, this is talking about Alexander the Great, why do I care about this? Start caring, because it's coming. That's uh, our warning to you, is to just take it seriously, and to take some new eyes, and let the Holy Spirit and there's no question that there are times in the Bible where prophecy seems to be fulfilled or partially fulfilled in patterns. And we see this throughout the scriptures where you'll see what appears to be like a partial fulfillment. But if you really scrutinize it, in, in a lot of these cases, you'll see it's not fully fulfilled yet. And so it really points to a future fulfillment. And just like Christopher mentioned, there are at least three mentions in Daniel that the angel says these things are for the time of the end. So we know that this wasn't fulfilled, you know, previous to, to Jesus or anything like that. This is something that is going to be fulfilled in the future. And so we need to be keeping our eyes on it. So that's all we have for you today for Prophecy Update. Make sure to subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube so that you'll be notified every time new events are happening and we can help bring the scriptures alive to you hopefully in these contexts. So thanks for being with us today.